There are many factors that will affect your microbiome, uh, particularly the mode of delivery at birth, whether you're born by C-section or by normal delivery. Age is a real critical factor. Um, we're quite interested in key um, developmental windows early in life where we know the microbiome is forming and it takes until about your two or three years old before you get a stable microbiome. Uh, the microbiome in adolescence is completely ignored up to now and it's very important because of all the plasticity that's going on in the brain at that period. And what we do know is that the aging microbiome loses its diversity. Bacteria can signal to the brain and change a lot of the fundamental brain processes uh, and change behavior. It, it moderates everything from anxiety to cognition to social behavior. What's great about your microbiome compared to your genome is that it is modifiable. And so having a modifiable microbiome uh, then we, allows us to think of what are the factors that are at play here. And of course diet is one of the bigger factors. So, so having a diverse diet with plenty of green fibers is very important. That much we know. Avoiding antibiotics as much as possible, so, so keeping away from an insult to our microbiome. Processed food should be avoided as much as possible and uh, uh, we know factors like emulsifiers and sweeteners can directly negatively impact the microbiome. And uh, living in a, getting exposure to the green environment is, is, is also very helpful in this regard. Our work is in complete alignment with the philosophy and the ideals of, of the Center for Brain Health in terms of managing a repertoire of resilience. Uh, across all the five pillars that you're interested in here. I think adding nutrition and diet into that and tell, helping to build gut-brain signaling to improve cognitive performance, uh, dampen down stress response, uh, and improve social cognition are very important areas in developing a toolkit uh, for people to be able to moderate their own resilience.